I'm Rachel Pollard. I want to find out what happens to growing startups on the cusp of greatness. What does an entrepreneur do when the euphoria of a great idea wears off and the true test begins? I'm Rachel Pollard, and I want to find out what happens when a startup moves beyond an idea, when things start to get real, when things start to get, well, weird. Hey everybody, Rachel here with Meet Advisors. I'm here with Bob Hudzik, interim executive who focuses on restructuring, change management, and post-merger acquisition. Bob, thanks so much for joining me. Glad to be with you. So what exactly does that mean? At what point do you step in with a company? What's kind of your sweet spot? Well, in a variety of different opportunities and roles, when a company is going through some sort of a major change and they're looking for how to restructure their business, perhaps consolidate two divisions together or move from you know, a geographic model into something that is more consolidated, uh, they'll often enter into a restructuring process that they just don't have the experience to be able to manage. So uh, I'm called in in situations to help plan what a restructuring might look like. Um, look at the organization and how it might operate, estimate the costs for doing something like that and how long it might take, and put together the project plan, if you will, that kind of maps out all the different things that need to be done over time uh, and structures the actual project management for people to then execute that strategy of bringing these things together. Uh, so it's often when a company or its board decides just continuing on the status quo isn't sufficient for them to achieve the profitability or the growth that they might want to achieve. Other occasions are when a company is considering growth through an acquisition. Mm -hmm. um, I help companies understand what their acquisition potential might be, help them evaluate candidates that are in their pipeline, conduct due diligence, to select one and help them actually structure the deal and move it toward an agreement on, on moving forward. One of the biggest challenges with an integration is once you get somebody to agree to the price that you want to pay, right. how do you bring those businesses together and get the benefit that you right. went out to actually buy them for? So what, what does that look like? How, how, how do you help companies kind of integrate with each other? Because I'm sure there's, you know, some issues when it comes to culture and teamwork and, you know, everybody's kind of confused about what's going to happen. Exactly. And they're not only confused, often the people in both organizations are terrified of the impact on them. Will they lose their jobs? Right. So you really have to kind of step back and try to understand what was the reason for the acquisition to begin with? What do you hope to get out of this? What are the benefits? Mm -hmm. Is it to enter into new markets with new products? Um, is it production capacity? Those kinds of things. And then put together a plan with the management of both companies, the company that's doing the acquiring, as well as the one that's being acquired, and figure out how to bring them together. And you really start with kind of the basics. Well, what business are you in? How do you conduct this business? What's your operating model? Um, you talk about culture. Uh, cultures can be extremely different from a management philosophy. One might be very entrepreneurial, consensus right. oriented. Others can be very command and control and exactly. the orders come down from the top. I've worked in companies where a command and control company acquired an entrepreneurial company. Tremendous clash of approaches I'm sure. and style. So sorting through how are we going to run the business going forward, who's going to do what, how do we bring these organizations together, and sort through all of the projects that are necessary to actually integrate the operations of the company is a, is a really major program management effort of multiple projects that can span a year or two or more to really get the benefit out of that. Definitely, definitely. And how, how do you when, you, when you first enter in with a company, how do you handle that trust issue that is typically there when you're getting a new executive? 
Well, you start by doing a lot of listening and meeting with people and understanding their issues. But one of the keys is communications. Um, when an executive team has been working on an acquisition, they've been involved and aware of this potential for months, if not longer, mm -hmm. in negotiating this deal. The rest of the organization is typically caught by surprise. So it takes a while to move the rest of the organization up to the same plane that the people that were doing the buying right. were involved <laughs> with over all of these years. And you have to overcome their anxiety. You have to deal with their uncertainty about what's going to happen with all of this. Do I still have a job? What, what locations will stay open? What will close? And, and I found a couple of things are very important. You can't over communicate. So the more you can put in place that is a regular communication to the companies at large, telling them what the process is, telling them what the timeline is, but also being very honest. Don't make promises that you can't keep. Right. Because if on day one you get up and say, everybody's safe, nobody's gonna lose their job, all our facilities are gonna stay open, it, you'll probably find it's very difficult for you to keep that promise right. as you go through the whole process. That sounds challenging. It, challenging but interesting because of the tremendous variety of things. And one of the things that interested me in that area as well as interim management is the ability to work in different industries, in different countries, on different kinds of problems from you know, public to non-public, profit versus non-profit industries, technology, non-technology. It, it is really challenging and interesting to be able to manage that kind of variety of things and bring your experience set to it. And what you often find is it almost doesn't matter the industry, the location, profit, nonprofit, the issues are pretty much the same at the fundamental level. So the same management skills work. Absolutely, that makes sense. And what advice would you give to companies who are going through an acquisition? Do lots of planning. Um, entering into an acquisition that is opportunistic. Somebody knocked on the door and said, I've got a friend who's got a friend whose company is for sale, and you haven't thought about why you want to do an acquisition, you're likely going to fail. Um, there's been a lot of research that has been done across the country, in fact, around the world, that looks at the success of acquisitions. Mm -hmm. um, it's sad to say that probably 80% of acquisitions don't meet the target that somebody wa wanted to do that deal to right. achieve to begin with. So a 20% success rate is pretty low. That is low. And it, it's really a function of not having done an acquisition that really fits your strategy and having been well thought out, not thoroughly evaluating the acquisition in terms of your due diligence, putting together a plan for how it's gonna fit in your company, the cultural challenges we talked about, how you're going to operate it, who the executives are going to be. But the other major failing is execution of that project or the, that series of projects over a period of time with somebody at a senior level owning that responsibility and managing the execution. There are a lot of consultants mm -hmm. out in the world who will come in and be very good at thought leadership and thinking about how to do things. Right. And they'll put together this wonderful product that tries to tell you, this is what you ought to do. This is what your strategy should be. They hand you the binder and they walk away. Most deals fail because of failure of strategy execution mm -hmm. rather than the strategy. Makes sense. So that hands-on continuity with an experienced professional to manage that process over a period of time is really the key to success. Makes sense. And can you tell our audience where they can learn more about you? Um, I have a, a website that people can go to. It is www.rjhexecutivemanagement.com. Uh, you can find some profiles there and background on the kinds of projects that I've done and so forth. So in, in addition to my own website, I am a, a proud member of the Association of Interim Executives. Um, 
that society also has their own website and they list on that website the profiles of all of the member interim executives. So please feel free to uh, look me up there as well, uh, interimexecutives.org. Thanks, Bob. Thank you.